ETL Computer 2. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, all of the counters uh, for our system uh, in our digital simulator. And uh, we're going to just jump right into this today. OK, so I'm going to start the simulation. OK, so what we're looking at here is uh, the smallest uh, building block for our counters in our system. And this is a simple uh, four bit counter. And it's just a little bit of, uh, you know, wrapping circuitry we have around a 74 LS161, which is a four bit counter IC. And uh, we can just kind of go through our uh, inputs to the, our inputs to the uh, circuit. We have a four bit uh, data bus uh, as input to the circuit for loading. We have our clock. We have our clear signal. We have ripple carry out. Uh, we have our our uh, four bit bus data out uh, from the counter. We have our clock enable single signal and our load signal. And uh, we also have uh, a hex uh, LED display uh, in the circuit. And this is just for this is just for debugging and use in the simulator. This would not be carried forward to our uh, you know physical design um, for our PC boards. And then I just want to introduce, uh, so that's that's a new visual element I don't think that we've seen before in digital. And also the notion of uh, some of our wires can be, uh, you know, single bit wires. Some of our wires can be multiple bits or, or you know, a data bus. And we can see the uh, four, if you look real closely there, you can see the four. <laughs> that means there's four bits there. And uh, this is a splitter. And this lets us go from, uh, you know, individual bit wires to to a data bus. E either way, we can go, you know, we can go from four bits uh, in and then a, a four bit bus out, or vice versa. So we we use those uh, at different times, and it's uh, just uh, I guess a convenience item. Okay, so this is ready to go. Let's see, we can just clock this, and we get our counting behavior as we would expect. We can clear we can clear the counter, and uh, we can load the counter. So I will load eight into the counter, bring the load line low, and we clock that, and we clock in the clock in the eight, and we can just resume counting again. And we see out here on our our data out bus, we have the uh, the four bit output from the counter. Okay, so this is our most fundamental building block for our counters, a four-bit counter. And um, this is actually what we're going to use for our instruction step counter, just as it is. The, just the vanilla, the vanilla basic four-bit counter is what will be used. Um, a couple of the things I wanted to just point out about um, digital. So this is our circuit. And if we go to uh, circuit settings, we can see some and go to uh, advanced, we can see here that we can set the shape of the, of the circuit. And that is really for how this uh, circuit will appear in uh, other circuits that include it. And you can see I'm using a, a, a dip, a dip representation here, and I'm specifying eight pins. So just gonna get out of that. I just wanna show that to you. And I'm gonna close this now. And now that was our 4-bit counter. So now we're coming up to our 8-bit counter. And we can see how this is the 4-bit counter that we just uh, edited. And you can see that it's, uh, it's a, an 8-pin eight, eight dip package, just like I showed you in the circuit settings. So that's uh, that's how you do that when you design a circuit. Uh, you can set pack what the package looks like. And uh, then you can even assign specific pins to uh, to your output and input signals as well but uh, I don't do that too much. Okay, so now we are up to our 8-bit counter and we are using two 4-bit counters for our 8-bit counter. And again, we have mostly all the same uh, inputs and stuff. We have our, this time we have an 8-bit 8 8 -bit, uh, in, input bus. We have our clock, our clear signal, ripple carry out again. We have our, our, our data out bus, which again is 8 bits now instead of four. And now we have two hex digits in our counter. So we can just look at that. 
again, counter enable and on our load signal. And I'll start this up, right? And we just have the same behavior. I won't walk us all through that, but it's the same behavior as we saw in the, uh, the four bit counter. And now we've again, built up to an eight bit counter. All right, so let's close this. All right, so now we're up to a 16 bit counter. And again, all we've done is we've uh, used our two 8-bit counters. We're bringing them together. And again, it's much the same, much the same setup. This time uh, we have an 8-bit, um, or we have an 8-bit input bus again. We have our clock, we have our clear, we have our ripple carry out again, clock enable. This time we have load low and load high, right? So we can load eight bits at a time. Uh, into this counter, either to the low or the high uh, bytes. And then we have uh, two output uh, buses this time. We have an 8-bit uh, low byte bus, and we have an 8-bit uh, high byte bus. Okay, let me just click, enable this and clock this through. Okay, let's load the... Uh, Let's load the high byte and we'll load that with 80. Okay, and I didn't I didn't disable the counter. Usually we want to disable the counter when we do the load. <laughs> load in a different value. And we'll load in a low value of uh, one. Okay, so the load is done. Now we would want to enable the clock again. And right, we're back to counting. No, we're not counting. What did I do? Oops, I have the load signals. All right, now we're back to counting. Here. Now we're back to counting. Okay, so you can see that we've just started with our four bit data counter. We've combined two of those to get to an 8-bit counter, and now we've combined two of those again to get to a 16-bit counter. Okay, and now we're looking at our program counter. And uh, here we've utilized our 16-bit counter that we just looked at last. And you can see here I'm using, I'm not using a dip, uh, a dip packaging representation for this any longer. As they just start to get a little bit bigger, it's um, just inconvenient to do that. It's a little bit more straightforward to do this. But um, anyway, so I pulled in uh, our 16-bit counter, right? We have our eight, eight data bits, low and high, that would be loaded in. Our load signal is clear. And our clock, we'll just enable this, right? We can clock this through. And uh, all right, we can even load something into the high. All right, so that's loaded in something in high. All right, so now we have something in the high byte and the low byte. And all right, so what's different about the uh, program counter is that we, uh, we can't just use it, the vanilla 16-bit counter, right? We need um, some buffer circuitry here because uh, the program counter uh, outputs to the data bus and the data bus is eight bits. So we need to do that. We need to out the, output the counter uh, a byte at a time. And right, we can do this by using the clock out high signal. And we see that puts the high, the high byte out on the bus or enable the clock out low to put the, uh, the low byte out on the bus, right? So these are just using uh, two eight bits um, tri-state uh, tri-state buffers, which we use a lot uh, in the system. Okay, and again, we're using these splitters here, so we're making use of those again. And uh, the counters, again, this is just for debugging purposes, purposes in the simulator. Okay, so that's that's our program counter, uh, which is here. And I, I did use a, <laughs> a dip packaging for that. It was one of the first things I did. I used the dip packaging, but... Uh, and then the memory address register. So the memory address register is also a 16-bit register. So we're again using our 16-bit counter, right? We have all the same behavior and I'm not gonna walk us through that. The only difference here is that the memory address register uh, is 
connected to the address bus and our address bus is 16 bits. So we, um, we, will, we output uh, the data from the uh, memory address re register as 16 bits. And you can see down here, we have the, a 16 bit uh, output data bus, which would, again, just by raising, uh, raising the signal, active low, outputs the uh, memory address registered to the address bus. Okay. So again, this circuit is uh, almost completely, is, is almost exactly identical to the program counter. The only difference is that the, uh, the high byte uh, and the low byte, the output is controlled uh, separately rather than one signal, uh, two, two output uh, control signals for, for that. Okay. And let's see. I think that's all we wanted to really look at today. We really looked at all of the counters now. So the basic approach here again, we started with a, a simple four-bit counter, and that four-bit counter uh, is going to be used for our, our instruction step counter, which we're not, not seeing here, but that would be that simple four-bit counter. And then we built that up, built them up from four-bit to an eight-bit into a 16-bit counter. And then our 16-bit counters, again, we use that as the basis for our two 16-bit registers, our program counter, and our memory address register. So I think that's it for today. Uh, so we saw a little bit, uh, besides our circuit designs, we saw a little bit about uh, the digital and how we can use the circuit settings and advanced to, to set the, uh, you know, the shape packaging. There's a bunch of different options there. We saw that and how we could also specify the number of pins that we wanted to have if we were using a dip, dip, uh, a dip packaging. And we also looked at those, uh, those wire splitters as well and introduced the notion of the, 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 the data bus lines. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, I think in our next video, we'll take a look at our control circuit for TTL Computer 2. And until then, that's it. Thanks for watching.